in color. Okay. So, um, as I was saying before, uh, this exam for the Kanban board, the second exam is quite different from the first one, uh, which is more focused on a, on a mostly, let's say, on a single page with a lot of complex uh, um, operations on that. And the data model is uh, on three levels. We have boards, we have columns that are inside boards, so every column belongs exactly to one board. And then we have uh, cards. And every card belongs exactly to one column. Uh, on the other hand, we have also users, and there is a many-to-many -many, relationship between users and boards because a board may be shared among different users, and a single user uh, may, of course, have more than one board uh, defined for them and for which they have access. Then there is a slight difference uh, whether you are the creator of the of a new board or uh, just uh, a, let's say collaborator, somebody shared that board to you. So it's a bit uh, so the two types of uh, relationship within within users and boards, but in general it's a many-to-many -many relationship. But uh, aside from the users, it's uh, it's all hierarchical. Um, so um, we may uh, try to go. I assume that we are we already read the text. Uh, so I think first we have to familiarize very well with these three concepts. So we say board, column, and card. And uh, um, the structure of the cards uh, is described here, okay? Uh, so every card is a small object that may have one title, uh, one description that are two text fields, uh, some uh, uh, links. So there was one question about the links uh, here uh, on the right hand side. I copied the, the, the question that you received on, on Slack, uh, and today we are we are uh, say um, replying to them. So uh, the the question about uh, uh, what are the interest links? Just a, a set uh, of uh, zero or more URLs actually so the the url and the title if you want uh, associated with the board the car sorry so the user can uh, insert and edit this set this list of items, okay? Okay, uh, so it may have uh, no one and no, no, no links or maybe more than one and the user can add uh, them. Uh, the URL are referred to whatever you want. So the user wants to bookmark maybe their Facebook page or the, the link to a tutorial or whatever, we don't care. We are just storing the link, uh, any link, uh, some uh, so to any website, uh, and uh, and maybe a title to show it. Okay? Um, so the, they are not uh, addresses inside; they are not bookmarks in your application. They are links in general. Mm -hmm. And you may have a deadline, yes or no. You, if you have it, of course, it will be a date. Mm -hmm. um, Such properties may be inserted when the user creates the card or may be modified later. So actually we have to handle the creation of a new card by asking this information. And uh, all four of these fields, the title, description, links, and deadline can be edited later on. So it can be modified or in the case of links or deadline that are optional, may be also added at the second time, okay? And editing a card is one of the possible actions that we see in the table below. And uh, uh, a lot of the work here is in handling the board. Uh, so we have this uh, card, which is in a place inside the, um, a column. And you take, can take this card and move it up or down. I don't know if you're familiar with Trello, for example. 
uh, or maybe I remember there's a nice uh, picture on Wikipedia. This one. Something like that. So you have one board. It's not exactly the same because we have slightly different requirements. So we don't have this part below. Uh, but we have one board that full, fills the entire page. And uh, the board has different columns. Uh, and each column has different uh, uh, cards. So we can take one card and move it up or down. So we will have uh, buttons uh, in the corners or in the size uh, or where you want uh, of each card that are, can be used. Uh, to move it up, so move it in the top position or, or below, or move it left or right, okay? And so it can shift from one column to the other. We are not specifying when I'm moving a car to the right, uh, whether it goes to the top or to the bottom. It's not specified, so do whatever uh, you prefer. So there are these four buttons uh, for moving the card, up and down within the column, left and right, across columns. Or you can archive, uh, a card. An archived card is a card which is still in the column but is moved at the bottom. So very similar to this one uh, here in Wikipedia it calls uh, defect. Uh, just imagine you have this archived row at the bottom. Um, so you have a pile of cards at the end that you decided not to care and so they are they will be uh, all there. Archived cards are shown in a shorter version. So they will be smaller because they show in just title and description. And they will only have one button, okay? Instead of all the four buttons for moving, um, you only have the button for an archiving. They will put the, the, the card back into the column where it came from. So from uh, a card can be archived and moved down or unarchived and moved back in the, in the, in the main part. Uh, I don't think there were any questions about archiving. Mm. No. Uh, concerning the the number of limits, there, there were two questions. Concerning the number of boards and columns that can be created by a user, uh, there is no limit. Uh, is uh, set is defined. So in, in theory, you can create a, an arbitrary number of cards and every card may have an arbitrary, an arbitrary number of, uh, of columns. And the same goes for this other question here, which is more specific actually. And uh, uh, no, here I say that the no limits are defined over the number of uh, of, uh, of columns and uh, whether if you have many columns uh, if you have many columns uh, um, what do you do so whether you shrink, shrink the columns you have many narrow columns or you choose to scroll the page horizontally it's up to you it's not specified in the text so choosing whether having narrow columns or horizontal scrolling is up to you. Both are accessible. What uh, I see in real applications is that uh, normally we don't shrink the columns too much uh, because otherwise it will be difficult to read and especially also all the user interface elements uh, will not fit. And so uh, uh, above a given uh, size, uh, we tend uh, to, to allow uh, some, some horizontal scrolling. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, it's up to you how you want, uh, you prefer to design the, the layout. Remember, sorry, I didn't say it at the beginning, uh, try to keep it simple huh? okay so if there are many possibilities for implementing a functionality choose the easiest one don't make your life more complex because okay? there is no value in added complexity if you want to do it for yourself fine but don't add complexity into an exam just for the sake of complexity what is not required in the text is not required that's it so don't don't think that we are 
uh, you know, strange people that we are writing some requirement, but then really we are expecting something more. No, if you're doing something more, it's outside the evaluation of the project. So you are doing extra work with no extra benefit. Hmm? I, we, we, I, I'm seeing that some people try to make it uh, more complex than, than what it is uh, as, a, as a general approach. Hmm? So I try to. Uh, there's a couple of questions. Uh, in the first column, is it possible to move left? Of course not, it's the first one. So if you have a card in the first column, you cannot move left unless you decide to implement a circular uh, board, but I don't see the reason why to make it more complex. And, and the same for the, the columns cannot be moved. Again, there's nothing in the text that talks about moving the columns, only moving the cards. So there's not a functionality that is required. It would be nice to have, but it's not required here. Um, so I will uh, add this, uh, or at least the most important questions that I, I are from the chat uh, will be added at the end on this document. So we will also have, aside from the recording, also a written track. Um, okay, the web application allows authenticated users to manage their own boards, which are shown in the main page. So we have one main page after the login. So the page that the user sees after the login. And this main page lists all the boards of the user. So when I log in, I see, of course, the list of all the boards that I can edit. So my boards, those that I have created, plus the ones that were shared with me. And this list only contains the name, the number of cards, uh, total and expired, uh, and expired cards. So the expired cards are defined here. Cards that have a deadline and this deadline is in the past, is already passed. So only these three fields, name, number of total cards in the board and number of expired cards. Very simple table, name, number, number. And this will be the main page after login, okay? All together, the boards that you own, that you created, and the boards that have been shared with you, all together. So this is the first page. Um, once we are talking about the pages, there are two other pages in this application. We go down and we see that we have a specific page of the application with two sections. Board is shared and board shared with me. So it's a, a, another page hmm, that will show uh, one table, two tables, separate tables, merge uh, with different colors, with different uh, uh, how you want. Uh, but only the board that you are shared with somebody or somebody shared with you. So actually, the boards shared with you are shown both here. In the, in the sharing page and in the main page, okay? They're, share, they're shown in both places. Board I shared is of course a subset of the boards uh, I, I own, basically. Um, and then we have a third page. We have this third page uh, that displays only an example board. This is the page for the uh, non-logged users the unauthenticated users. So when you open the application before login, you only show a read-only example port. So it could be just, just an example. This page cannot be edited, modified, anything. It could be just even HTML, static HTML if you want. So just for showing what a board looks like. It's a fake board, uh, you can, generate it in, with the same React components, uh, or we can just generate the HTML. It's just a welcome page with an example of what will come later, with no interaction. So the, the, the original page only has the login form to start with, and nothing more, okay? So in a, in a way, it, uh, uh, it responds uh, here, the first page that should appear is a mockup on one board with two columns uh, you choose and some cards, you choose how many, and the login button. So uh, just to, to, to state the, the obvious, uh, the first page, 
contains a, a fake board with no interaction plus the login function functionality whether it's a button it's a form it's a link uh, i don't care okay uh, i see a question in the chat uh, whether in the main page the boards are full detailed of course not we we'll just say that uh, there's only a list of all the boards and this list contains only name number and number of spark cards. And the same goes for the, for the second page. They are just lists, okay? We don't have the full uh, board with all the columns. Uh, no, just a table that with the titles, actually, of the boards. Hmm? If you click on the table of on the titles, of course, we go to the page containing the board, which is the main, the main uh, say, open, in, interactive part of, of the application, okay? Um, uh, the, does the login form I have to be placed in a separate page? Mm, you choose, you choose. You can have the login form on the main page or have a login link that goes to a specific page, open a model, whatever. In fact, here I talked about login functionality. In, the way you implement this functionality is free. Mm? It's not specified, so you can choose. Also, the two sections are not detailed, are just, yes, yes, of course. So the only page where we see the full board with columns and cards is the, is the, the, the board page. Okay, this one, let's say. Okay, only here. In all the other pages, so the main page and the shared page, we only see a list, a table, whatever. We don't see the details. The only details we see is the name, the number and the number. Uh, you should try to, to accept that <laughs> we are not making it more complex, okay? Um, if somebody clicks on the card on this fake page, uh, so if you want to add some interaction on the fake page, uh, if you want, it's not required, okay? What it says only is, uh, um, a read only static, so it doesn't. It's not required to do anything. Of course, in the same page, you must have uh, uh, some some login action. How you access the login in a separate part, or you also want to access the login by clicking on a card? I don't think it's very intuitive clicking on a card that looks like a card and then being uh, uh, drawn to the login. But uh, it's it's up to you. It's not required. Hmm? You're not required to do anything except showing this uh, this example card. Uh, Silvio is asking, should the selected board appear in the same page of the list of my board or in another one? I would put it in a, in a separate page just because it's a lot of content. So the list may be also already long and have many uh, occupy a lot of space, and then we have the board. The board needs to take all the space that we that we have. So I will really have a dedicated page for the board. For the, so we have uh, how many pages we have in these applications, and by pages I am not meaning routes uh, or whatever. You, how you implement them is your choice. I don't care. But the kind of different screens that we have is the example page for not authenticated users is the main page with the list of my boards, is the shared boards page with the list of the boards shared with and for me and by me, and the, the board page itself. So these four main interfaces, right? Um, and the last one is, uh, of course, the, should, should be by itself because it's the one with most functionality and most content. Okay. Um, a user can perform virtual operations on the board and they basically edit and modify uh, operations. Uh, there's nothing strange. You can create a new board from the main page. So from the page when you have the list of the boards, so you can create a new one. Uh, you can delete a board from the main page or from the list 
or from the share board page because maybe you want to delete a shared uh, board and not the one that you own. So you cannot delete a board from inside the board. You must go to the list page. You can share the board with another user inside the board. And there was some question about sharing, a lot of question about sharing actually. Uh, we'll come to that in a second. And then normal edit functions, you can create a new column. Columns only have a name. So you can just, when you, when you create a new column, you give it a name, rename, or delete the column. And of course, deleting the column will delete all the cards inside. You can create a new card. And uh, for these, op these operations uh, about uh, uh, column management are somewhere inside the board page. And inside the column, you have a, a, an, an action to create a new card. So for example, somewhere in the board, you have some action, maybe uh, the corner here title called the new column, for example. And inside the column, maybe you have a plus button here for adding a new card or some, uh, so, so, some place where in every column, you have one action to add a card into that column. So that's why, why creating a card is something inside the column. Then you can edit a card just by uh, inside the, the card itself. So the card should have uh, some, some sort of edit button that will allow you to edit that. You can edit the card in place, so make it editable in the same place, or you can make it model, for example, you make it larger and uh, with a pop-up or with a separate page, it's uh, up to you. But the start of the edit is, of course, from inside the card. And moving the card is the easiest one of the four buttons that we, uh, that we talked before, and an archive also. Um, Okay. Uh, I will uh, uh, reply to the to Enrico with his uh, asking the same question for the third time uh, in after. Okay, let me finish the, about the sharing. Um, okay, so uh, the board sharing. The board sharing is something which is uh, we try to make it sim simpler than the actual sharing of of, uh, of uh, multi-user applications basically you can uh, you have one in the list of your cards you can when you are inside a card you can share it with some other user okay uh, so it says for example we see is with the, the question um, the board share inside the board should be a button to insert the email of the user okay basically what we have is that from the board inside the board because we say that sharing is an action within the board, uh, I may add select a user ID to share the board with. That's it. Okay. No confirmation from the other users is required. No email, I, I call, I said user ID. So uh, we already take the user from the database. I don't want to sh make another uh, search for emails or whatever, just a list of IDs. Uh, and I, I want to, I choose which user will have access to this board. Uh, once uh, um, a, a board is shared, Every user has the same capabilities. So if a user deletes a card in a shared board, the card will also disappear from the other users. Yes. If one user deletes the card, it is deleted for everybody. But we don't require automatic updating of the user interface. So again, uh, it, there will be a very complex problem in this application if uh, we have uh, more users that are trying 
to edit the same board at the same time. So I'm moving a card, you're deleting one, somebody else is, is adding a, a third card. And so the backend still re is receiving modifications to the same board from uh, many different users. This will be really difficult to keep it synchronized. It's outside the topics uh, that we studied in the course. So as a general rule, uh, we are assuming that only one user is editing um, a, car, a board at every time, okay? So this is a strong assumption. Mm? This is a very strong assumption, but we are making that in order to make, the, make it feasible. So assume that only one user at a time is editing or viewing a board. Okay, so we, are, we have not to deal with concurrent modifications or we updating something because somebody else has updated the database. That would require a kind of interaction, uh, server to client interaction that we are not prepared to do, okay? Um, what, and the same question uh, replies here uh, with a similar question, what happens to the other users if the owner deletes a shared board, the board goes away for both users? So I can delete a board that has been shared with me and at that point the board is gone and will disappear also for the owner. Oops, sorry. Okay, I will put the disappears for everyone. Uh, Claudio is asking uh, if a user has an ID or signing phase that we asked. Uh, okay, there is no, um, there is no uh, registration functionality required here. So you decide what is a user ID. Of course, uh, we should not be, uh, you can, when you are selecting a new user, you don't ask uh, the user to select numbers of a uh, numeric IDs. So either uh, you can choose whether to show full names or to show, say, login IDs, nicknames. It's, uh, it's up to you. And then if you want to use the nickname as the identifier or the email as the primary identifier or another numerical identifier, it depends on how you want to create a database. Okay, just don't show numeric IDs to the user when he wants to share a board with the user number 27 or 28, that the user cannot know. Show some information that is relevant to the user, might be the nickname or the email or the full name. It depends on how you want to store the user data in, in your database. Um, okay, uh, again, uh, there, there was a question that was, in Italian, but the, the reply is the same. Uh, we are not, uh, we assume that only one user at a time is editing or viewing a board. So these modifications will, uh, uh, let's say, will be shown when the other user will open the board. So it will show, we'll see the, the updated board, but it doesn't work in real time. Um, Every user can delete or modify a shared board or only the owner can. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I, I don't have the, but the, of course the, the, the whole point of sharing boards uh, is that everybody may, can make any modification. Otherwise, it's not a read-only sharing, it's a full control sharing. Once I share it with you, we can do this the, exactly the same operation that I do. Um, during the creation of the board, uh, we have to ask for the title of the two columns or we just put uh, uh, placeholder titles. I personally would put two placeholder titles just not to make the creation more complex. We are asking for a title of the board and the board will start with two columns uh, because the text says that a, a new column, a new card should have at least two columns uh, here. 
And so when you are creating a new board, you have to create two columns with zero cards in them. So the columns may start empty, but the columns uh, should be two and should have a name. Uh, um, this question number 12 uh, asking, do we choose a name or we ask the user to provide the name? It's up to you. Okay. Uh, the, the real answer is it's up to you. You are free to choose. Maybe putting placeholders is a simple decision. Just for simplicity, placeholder titles. I would put, I would do this, but if you want to do uh, differently, you're free. Uh, do we have to implement a registration form? No, it's not. No, no word in this page talks about the registration, so registration is not required. Hmm? Uh, maybe also in the end, it says that. Uh, You see that the database uh, must be preloaded. So we, we load at least five example users, but we don't provide any registration capability. Hmm? It's not required. You don't have to provide that. And neither the changing the password or whatever, hmm? just the login. Um, if a user, Gianluca is asking, if a user that shares a board, deletes it, it should be deleted only from the list of its shared board or should be deleted also from the, if a, a board is deleted, is deleted. So it will disappear from every list. Just, it doesn't exist anymore. It's not, we are not just deleting the sharing operation, but we are really wiping the board away, okay? Uh, when the user lists a board, a related question is here in the, in the form, uh, is, it will trigger a cascade action of deletion of the shared connection with users column? Yes, in a way, yes. Uh, everything about the board will be deleted. Of course, deleting a board means deleting all the cards inside the board and all the columns inside the board and all the relationship with uh, the users that may have uh, uh, that board shared with. So after the deletion is like the board never existed. No, no trace remains. Deleting on a board on the share uh, with me page means the deletion of the connection to the board also deletes the original ones. Uh, it also deletes uh, the original word, the original board. It's, it's not, let's say, normal because usually in, uh, in, in multi-user application, we have the operation for deleting and the operation for unsharing, or for removing the sharing. But we, do, we didn't want to make it more complex. You see, the focus of this uh, uh, exercise should be actually on the editing of the board. Okay, so we are trying to make everything else as simple as possible. The sharing as simple as possible, showing the list of boards as simple as possible so that you can focus actually on editing the cards and the columns and everything inside. Uh, can the user unset the sharing of a board with a specific user is not required. So once you share, it's forever. It's, there's no requirement for doing that. Uh, Francesco is asking whether you can uh, uh, manage the deletion uh, or with a, with us at the SQL level, the database level. If you want, you can do that. Uh, just check whether you are re you are really able to 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 cascade all the modifications that you want. And of course, then you will need also to update the front end state, okay? Because uh, uh, we are deleting from the back end, but also the front end should know that uh, it's deleted. But yes, you can choose to uh, shift the work more on the database or shift the work more on the front end. It's, uh, it's up to you hmm? how you feel uh, more confident. Uh, are there any other unanswered questions? Uh, Um, let me check. 
so again there are several questions about how many pages so let me write it down and then i can reply to claudio um, so the pages of the application are let me call them pages with course because maybe they are not pages in the sense of different addresses but uh, uh, we, we are, one is the analog of the page analog users home and it only contains the example static uh, board plus login functions then one for the uh, main page main logged users it have as, as the list only the list of uh, my boards owned or shared only the list then we have the shared boards page which has only the list one or two list list or lists of shared with me or by me and then finally we have the board page that has all the columns a single board cards etc of a single board right I think it should be clear. Okay, uh, Claudio is asking if we have a shell board, we have to use a specific table on SQLite, or is it possible to really join on board ID? So uh, just uh, remember the cardinality. A board can be shared with many users. Uh, and so you have the board, we will have a, a table in database for boards, a table for users, and you have a many-to-many -many relationship between the board ID and the user ID. Because a user can have different boards shared with him, and the, the board can be shared with many users. So you need an extra table. And of course, uh, this table will join with users and will join with board, but uh, you cannot do that inside the, inside the board table, because there's more than, the board will have a user ID, which is the owner, but then the, uh, there will be a man to many relationship between users and, uh, and board uh, as far as sharing is concerned. Hmm? Just the, the data model. So don't forget uh, <laughs> the databases uh, that you learned uh, last year. And uh, maybe the last point that we, didn't, uh, we haven't mentioned yet is uh, this one. The application should immediately set the change on the service database. So we have all these actions in table one. And what it's saying is that uh, we sh uh, the, the backend should be always uh, updated. Uh, we are making it slow, uh, but we are making it safe. Uh, one possibility could be to let the user do many edits and then save all of them at once. But then it will require a very complex state management in the front end when you remember which operations have already been saved and which are not, and what happens if you are reversing an operation. So you may you're moving a card and then you're moving it back, it will become very quick, very sorry, very complex. Will, very quickly will be complex. So uh, the choice we made is that, okay, you move a card, you make it move in the front end and then update the database. So that the database is always, we are making some traffic on the backend, we don't care, but the, the, the backend always knows about the current state of the front end. Do you want to do that in an optimistic way? So you, you update the front end and then you schedule the backend and you don't wait for the backend to refresh the interface? Okay, if you want to place the, the safe way, so you first update the database and then you uh, you show the modifications on the front end uh, only when the database gives you the okay sign it's also another possibility we are not saying how you do, you do that uh, what we are saying is uh, 
don't make it more complex uh, for, uh, for saving some API calls. Do these API calls uh, straight ahead, and so it will be uh, simpler, okay? Uh, you don't have to manage a disconnected state, let's say, some modification that the front end knows about, but the back end doesn't know. And then you will have the problem of reconciliation of these two data sets, which is, again, a hard problem uh, to do with, say, just a simple programming tool without specific, uh, let's say, uh, libraries or, or approaches. Um, the positions index of the columns and cards have to be persisted in database. Uh, yes, Francesco, yes. Because when you will go back to the same uh, uh, board, uh, you, I want to see the columns in the same place and the cards inside the columns in the same place. Uh, otherwise, moving the, the, the cards up and down would be you know, futile uh, because if, they, if I refresh and the database moves them. So these are two attributes that you need to remember. So actually, the column belongs to a board and has a knows the position it has in, in the board columns are easy because because they can only be created or deleted a card knows the column in which it lives and knows the position inside the column and that information should be saved uh, okay I, I think that the, the remaining questions are all uh, say about this uh, fake quartz. It's the same, yes. For example, here somebody was talking about filtering uh, the on page. We are not asking for any of that, okay? Uh, concerning these two pages, the main log page or the shared page, uh, it may be one single page where we when you show or hide the section or two separate pages, uh, it's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, as long as the user has the choice of seeing only their own boards or the shared boards, uh, these two may be two separate pages or only one page where you, where you decide whether to show or hide some information. It's... Uh, Maybe it's easier having on one page with three portions, but depends on how you how you design it. And the only option you can do here in the main page is uh, entering a board and creating a new board or deleting. Sorry. Of course, there's a mistake here that talks about a screenshot of the interactive configurator it will not be inter the interactive configurator, it will be the, the board, okay? But uh, <laughs> it was a cut and paste error. I will correct it in the in the final version of the text. Um, uh, in, during the first exam, there were several questions about uh, this screenshot. Uh, we are asking it for a very simple reason, okay? Maybe you are loading some CSS files from uh, inside the project from outside, uh, or you are loading some images uh, or something like that. And uh, there may be some mistakes in the path or whatever. And we load the page, we don't see all the elements uh, for some maybe st very stupid path or permission problem. So having a screenshot make a, makes a, it very easy for us to just have a look at the application and say, okay, this is how it's working. How you look, how you see it in, on your computer. Uh, so it's a very quick check uh, to, to say, okay, this is the intended way they develop the application. It's not maybe a Firefox versus Chrome issue or something like that. We see that the application on your computer is, work, is working this way. We just have one screenshot. We load it in our, in our computer and it looks the same. So we know that there are no stupid permission or path uh, or file capitalization problems uh, or something like that. That's uh, the only reason why we ask for the screenshot. Uh, 
uh, it was, I think, the, the simplest way we could think of uh, to do this quick check. Klaus is asking, when a user edits something in the board or in the card, the only way for the user to see the modification? Yes, yes. You uh, remember the assumptions. We are assuming that only one user at a time has that specific board open. Okay, so it's not even refreshing the page because uh, the second user would not be looking at the page, at the, this board uh, at the same time, right? Um, and so, uh, the only user will see the updates when we will open the board. Uh, and of course, if it's already open and it will refresh it, it will of course pick uh, the, the new data from the database, of course. So uh, in terms of, uh, of, um, of API calls, uh, you should load all the board information when you open the board, okay? And not store all board information in the in the application state. The application state will have uh, state for only one board. But don't think uh, in terms of refreshing the page because the next step will be what happens if I modify something without refreshing? Hmm? Then there's the risk uh, I'm modifying something with that has already been changed. So don't think about that. Only one user at a time has a specific board open in a given moment. Okay. Are there any other questions or points that are not clear? Paolo is asking on database in the board table, do we have to keep every card? Uh, I think there will be a card table in database. So I, what I'm imagining is a database with a with a table board, one table column, and a table card. I, I don't understand the question actually. Actually, different table for uh, it's part of the database design you have many boards so you must have a table with boards and, uh, if you if you do the entity relationship diagram you will come up with uh, at least five tables users boards columns cards and uh, the relationship between users and cards for sharing I, I, I'm not able to do it with less than five uh, tables. Maybe links. You decide how to implement the links because there's uh, again a, a one to many relationship, which is the links inside the cards. So since a card may have more than one link, uh, you can store all of them in a text field or whatever, or uh, you can uh, um, have a separate table just for the links. Uh, of a given card. It's the detail. I would edit this, this answer here that I said URS and the title. The title is really not actually not required. Okay, so it's only URS. And if you want. Also title. Uh, 
but it's not required. Let make it, let's make it simple. If some of you also submit to the first exam, I made a, a quick check and they spent some hours uh, cloning projects uh, yesterday, and we have uh, more than 80 projects that were submitted. So it will take some time. So unfortunately, we'll be, before we can give you the result of the first data, uh, we will need uh, several days to sort all, all through all the problem, all the projects. So. I'm sorry with that, but uh, the first uh, exam was really where most people went. Uh, and so uh, we cannot give you a, a, a too quick feedback, feedback about uh, your work. Well, well, we are trying to do it you know, as quick as we can, but actually there's the, the number of projects to see is relevant. Claudio uh, is asking the page with all the boards, uh, should we make some color differentiation? Or oh, you you should make it uh, say visible whether the the board is your board or is shared is a shared one. If you do this difference with color or with or by making uh, say two sections with the title, so making them separate, uh, it's uh, it's your choice. But of course, uh, we may, since we are both of two different types, uh, we must uh, see. So you can have a different icon, a different color, or a different section of the page. Uh, so see, uh, how you show that is your choice. But of course, yes, you should uh, show some kind of difference. And then we have the question uh, from San Francesco. Can the links be said the single string, which is string is separate by comma? uh you can do tricks uh, uh we, by, uh, for storing the links uh, uh just be aware that the comma is a valid uh, character that may appear in your else uh, if i don't remember bad so I may choose a good separator and uh, um, and of course uh, you must remember to unpack and pack all these uh, say fields uh, when you edit them so you have to evaluate whether which which one is quicker. Okay, if you make a separate table or to uh, compact uh, all the links into one encoded uh, text string. But yes, it's uh, it's possible. Since we are not uh, doing any identification of the links, there will not be any API that uh, specifically search for searches for a link or something like that. Uh, we can also collapse all everything in the text field. Just be aware of the how to separate them, how to split and, and rejoin them in a safe way.
Okay, I was checking whether anything new happened on Slack. Okay, no. Okay, so I think, oh, sorry. Francesco, yes, for the sharing feature, user can share the board just entering the ID of the user. Yes, entering or selecting maybe a, a list of IDs and you click the ones. Uh, not the, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, of course you have to check whether this ID is valid. So it's a real user in the database. And it will not be a number, of course. It's not the numerical ID. It's not the primary key. So it'll be some 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 readable ID identification. But just yes, we just you just specify which users will have access. Um, again, Claudio uh, didn't understand how it works. The submission of the project. Hmm? So the submission of the project. <coughs> sorry. Uh, it's. Uh, It's uh, where, where did, you, did you rewrite it? Sorry, let me open. This. So uh, you have to go uh, to the link uh, that we provided uh, that will bring you to the classroom, okay? GitHub classroom uh application you do all the procedure that is shown here it's uh, this document is in the, on the web page of the course okay so we have all the steps uh, to fork a project so after this step we we you will have a project forked forked uh, for you in a, pri a private project uh, where you should work okay so you can work uh, freely in that rep git repository okay you can work with one or different branches, I don't care, but the final project must be in the master branch of the prod. So if you work in separate branches, okay, but then remember to merge your final version in, in the master. And since you may have different uh, commits, uh, we want to know which commits is the, the one that we should check, okay? So one of the commits should be tagged with final, okay? Uh, we put, maybe I, I will repeat it uh, here, uh, the command, the git commands for uh, having this tag. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, uh, in all the list of commits, uh, there will be one which has a specific tag, it's called final, we will check out that specific uh, tag. Uh, that tag should come, uh, should be made uh, before the deadline, it's here. So we, we, that's the version that we are going to check up. So if you check out, if you also do some, maybe a later commit to the, to the master or we, we don't care. We only check this specific tag. Tag is a specific Git functionality for marking, for giving a name to a specific commit. That's it. And um, so you must uh, download this, work in the repository and push commit and push the final version and tag with the final tag. And also remember to uh, enroll in the Portale della Didattica, of course. So the, we are, what, the check I'm doing is uh, I'm checking, I uh, make the, the end of three conditions. One, you are enrolled in the Portale della Didattica. Second, you downloaded the project, you accept the project. And third, there is a final tag on the main branch. If these three conditions are met, I will correct the, the, the exam. Otherwise, it means that you retired, you decided not to submit. So if either of the three, so you can delete from the portale, from the uh, presentazione, from the reservations in the portale, you can uh, not submit the final. And so in both cases, I just ignore your project. Okay, so I will uh, uh, update uh, this document here and give you the link uh, so that you can uh, have a look. Uh, maybe I will collapse some similar questions into one just to make it uh, easier to read. 
and uh, will I will add uh, three or four questions that were say new ones, uh, interesting one that came in the chat, and uh, I will share that uh, today. And at the same time, I will update uh, the, the 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 exam text to the final version with some. Uh, Say a little modifications, okay, corrections about this error of the screenshot, uh, and maybe some more details about what the links are supposed to do or something like that, but very you know, uh, small, tiny corrections. Just remember that the general rule is uh, if it's not required in the text, don't do it. <laughs> and the second, if there is no specific requirement on how to do it you can choose whatever you want the way you want so should i use route if you want should i use context if you want should I use hooks should i use and so you're, you're really free to design your uh, your solution as long as it implements those functionalities that we have here okay so in most of the cases uh, for your question the response is uh, it's up to you Uh, the only thing I would recommend is maybe trying to experiment a bit with tagging, uh, maybe on a separate project or with a, with a, with a na different names for the tag, uh, so that you don't uh, do that in the last uh, 20 minutes before submission, because there were some people that went really tr crazy on Sunday evening uh, for the submission. So try <laughs> maybe to, to spend... Uh, 15 minutes uh, in in a in a funny familiarizing with this git workflow which is not in the last day or in the last uh, 15 minutes before the deadline mm -hmm. okay so i think that most of the questions are being addressed <laughs> If you have still uh, some uh, issues, you can use a uh, Slack uh, on the on the channel uh, exam two Kanban. And uh, then after I update these documents, uh, where they try to summarize all the questions up to now, I will reply individually to each uh, to each question. So try to follow the channel uh, to get, be, be updated. But just remember the general rule. Try to keep it simple. Simple. Don't uh, do any work which is not required. Okay. 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 So I don't see any last minute questions. So I think uh, it's time to say goodbye, and uh, we'll meet you. The, uh, hopefully at the exam. Okay, good work. And of course, if you need any support, uh, try use Slack whenever you want. Thank you. Bye bye.